In case you haven't heard, we're in the second wave on the planet right now. The transition between the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. And we had a celebration event on July 27th to celebrate three years international bestseller for the book, The Second Wave, Transcending the Human Drama that I channeled from White Eagle in 2019. I'm your host, Carrie Hummingbird, and this episode has installment number two from that beautiful July 27th event, and it features Rainbow Raja with some beautiful shamanic channeling and drum work it's an experience to have and I want to encourage you to stay present through the sound and the transmission that's being communicated as it is quite potent and powerful and uh, you know zoom sometimes have a hard time communicating that and translating that through sound so just trust that as you listen to this you are receiving a powerful transmission I welcome you to stay through that we also are featuring Lisa Winston today the uh, number one international best-selling author of your turning point and she's going to talk about creativity as an artist and how creativity can get you through these challenging times and we finish up with Hillary Harley, who is a practicing astrologer and a Reiki and Akashic Records uh, mentor. And she has a podcast, Mystical Messages, and she has monthly astrological forecast. She's going to tell us what to expect for the coming time in 2022. So really, really, really super excited that you're joining us. And if you haven't heard the replay from part one, please go back and listen to that and then resume here. So grateful that you're joining us. Soul Nectar Show, the Soul Nectar Show. You're invited, delighted to discover who you are. Anything is possible if you believe. Join us on this beautiful journey. So let the show. So let the show. Before we start this episode, I, Carrie Hummingbird, and I, Akeem Sami, want you to know that you are invited. You're invited to, to join, join Soul Nectar, Nectar Tribe. Tribe. If you like what you hear on Soul Nectar Show, you will love being in person with us in Soul Nectar Tribe. We invite you to check it out. First 30 days is free. Right now, go to carryhummingbird.com, K-E-R-R-I, hummingbird.com, forward slash membership, and sign up. We'll, we'll see you at our, our next tribe, tribe gathering. gathering. And now, on to the show. I hope that you've been enjoying um, these transmissions and these healings and these insights that are coming through our amazing speakers. I wanted to also say that if you haven't been uh, aware, this is the Second Wave book. This is what we're celebrating today. This is something channeled by White Eagle. Um, I channeled his messages through this book um, for this time, and this was in 2019, and it's been on the international bestseller charts on Amazon in five countries ever since, and I did not pay for that nor um, have a book promoter or anything like that. It's just because the power of it is what we need right now, especially if you're in the second wave and this is the work that you're here to do. So I wanted to um, also invite you, if you have read the book and you love the book, will you please go up and write an, a review on Amazon? I would so appreciate that help. It does help it to get out in the technology engines out to more people who might be interested in that kind of thing. It helps it stay on the charts so that, you know, people find it. So let me bring on Rainbow. And let me tell you a little bit about Rainbow Raja. So Rainbow has spent the last eight years working on one-on-one -on -one with people across the globe to help them transform their lives through shamanic bodywork and Phoenix activations. And she is the host of the Rainbow's Rising podcast. And if you tune into her podcast, you will hear her. If you tune into Soul Nectar Show where I interviewed Rainbow, you will hear her amazing, like, <sighs> You have an amazing healer that comes through you, Rainbow. It's like, wow, it's incredible. Um, I've experienced them, this medicine and it's super potent. I'm a healer myself, so I kind of have some healer discernment and it's, it's, a, it's a potent healing. So welcome, Rainbow. Welcome with us today. 
Thank you for having me. I'm sorry. I, I had better headphones, but, but then they died. So now I have to use these adorable I cute think it's ones. It's actually perfect. <laughs> it's really perfect. Awesome. Thank you for having me today. Um, I decided to have this outside because <laughs> you, you got to be connected with nature. That's like one of the the most difficult things with so much technology. We're all stuck indoors all the time. Uh, that was actually one of the things that kind of came through while I was like sitting and contemplating like what energy to bring into this group today. It was, um, you know, yesterday was when I was kind of, I sent you what what was coming through and you were like, yeah, just whatever comes through is, is going to be good. But um, yeah, it was, I just kept seeing like us bringing our technology into nature because technology has become such a like, such an important connection tool for us but we forget that just because we have phones just because we have laptops like we can take them outside we have to start integrating the technology into the earth energy or we're not going to be able to bridge that gap and a lot of the work that I do is um, as you said I do a lot of phoenix activations but I also do a lot of like kind of integrating rainbow spectrum stuff with shadow work and like helping people recognize that a part of accepting who you are is being able to accept your shadow and accept those negative emotions. I really loved what the speaker two people ago had to say at the very end where she was talking about, um, you know, we all have these negative emotions that come up and we really want to like push them down. We want to like deny them. But I have learned through working with spirit and with my guides that the best thing to do is really to connect with that energy and to be present with it because the only way that you can heal it the only way that you can really allow it to move through you is to be one with it and to allow it to really consume you in that moment and to be a part of you in that moment and if you're not allowing yourself to feel that discomfort deeply into your bones all the way down into your core being then you're not able to pass pass it on to pass it through you right back into the earth where it came from and I think a lot of a lot of new age practitioners are they mean well when they're like, oh, stay in the light, all the light, all the light. We have to remember that there would be no light without darkness. There would be no no hope without despair. And we have to see that duality. We have to start really embracing the dualistic nature that is our human experience. And I know that that's taking the tone a little different here. And I don't mean to, to put a damper on it because really there is a beauty in our human experience. There's a beauty in the suffering um, because when you come through that suffering, there's just so much more gratitude for when we are doing well and when things are really functioning for us. So I know for me, like right now, like my guides are just reminding me to like kind of drill into you guys that even if you're feeling all those negative emotions, and this is for me too, right? For me too, because I'm, I'm having these negative emotions come up too. And it's like, you have to feel those emotions, but you also can go back into times when you were in a worse place and go, you know what? I've come so far. Like, I know this is going to pass because it passed the last time. It's going to pass again. And in this moment, I'm going to enjoy this pain. You know why? Because when I'm in those good feelings, I'm not going to remember this pain. And it's kind of nice to know that right now, this sensation, you know, there's nothing better than knowing that you're feeling something, you know, because oh, there are so times, yeah. you know, when I was on medications, I felt nothing. There's right. nothing worse than feeling nothing. You know, we forget, you know, for people who've never felt nothing, it is seriously, your life is void of meaning. Suffering is so important for understanding the importance of like, our life and our validity uh let me see um i noticed the it's yes it's the wholeness of the human experience yes absolutely christine aguilar yes yes um uh, i don't know i think this other one uh is for is for you yeah it's for me. us <laughs> so so what's really interesting is that um that talk about the pain and really embracing the pain, like feeling mm -hmm. the pain and embracing the pain. Yeah. And it's it's not just feeling it and going, okay, now I felt I'm done with it. It's like, let it go through its whole motion. Like you can't tell it when it's done. It needs 
it needs to be done through its own process. You can't rush it. You just have to be with it. Just like a kid going through a tantrum. You can't force a kid to stop having a tantrum. You just have to be with them and hold space for them. You have to hold space for yourself and have that compassion for yourself. And going into that deep centered space that we were, t- mm. that several speakers have talked about coming into that deep space of like really honoring and accepting the entire spectrum of the whole journey that's, that's happening within that's powerful. And, you know, I mean, I remember, and this is maybe a little TMI, but as I was experiencing my last menstrual cycle, right? Like I knew that this was mm-hmm. the last one because of various details. I won't share her, but I knew this. Oh my God. I'm like, this is the last, the potentially the very last one. And I mm-hmm. just refused to take any pain medication. I said, no, I'm not going to take it. Good any for pain you. You wanted, you wanted that whole, I am going to the whole feeling feel of it. this because I'm never, I'm not going to have it again in this lifetime. So I'm going to yep. feel this fully and just feel what my body is going through and what it's telling me and what I'm experiencing. And I, and, and I transformed my attitude around it. Like this is, this is not a terrible thing. This is a wonderful thing. And you know, how, how beautiful that my body can create a life, how beautiful that my body created two lives and birthed them into beautiful sons. Mm-hmm. That's gorgeous. And to be in the space of, of appreciation for my physicality that was able to um, bring me through a lifetime with a cycle, you know, connected to the earth, like you said, and that, you know, rather than distancing and for many people here, maybe you've been following me and you know my story of being on the medications and then feeling like mm-hmm. that wall in between me and all of the other things. Um, thank you, Tan Mayo. We're so glad that you were able to be here with us. We love you. But feeling all of those other things, it's like, it's it's important to feel those things. They don't go away just because you're not feeling them. They're still there being, yeah. they're still there existing. It's just that you've like put some wall in between you and your actual self and, and the then you're not is, feeling it. Absolutely. And the thing is, is when we do put that wall there, when we, we are actually blocking energy from flowing, And I don't know how many of you guys do energy work or receive energy work um, or have experienced the power of energy work, but you can see it in creation. Like when we have certain blocks in creating, whether it be like a writer's block or a creator's block, or even just a block of getting work done, it's usually because there's an area of our life that we are neglecting. It's usually because we are trying to avoid doing something that is uncomfortable, You know, whether it's sitting down and doing the work or whether it's, you know, maybe you haven't been taking care of your health and therefore you can't sit down and do the work because you don't get to, you know, enjoy the the pleasure of accomplishment when you're not taking care of yourself, right? You're not taking care of of your needs and what your body needs to, to function. So and isn't this kind of all part of the same theme of like feeling your feelings, being present with the full range of human experience, paying attention to your body, which is the physical aspect of you that is also mm-hmm. made of earth. And so then like back to what you were talking about, connecting with earth, connecting back in with the earth and being mm-hmm. part of that. And that's, I feel, I know that your um, guide that comes through is very shamanic in nature. And Mm -hmm. I feel like, honestly, that's a funny little like thing I just said, but it's very shamanic, right? In the essence and in the energy and in the practice. And I feel that that's what we're being called forth to be is very well connected into the earth. And so these indigenous traditions are actually really, really important right now on the planet. Yeah, um, I think a lot of us are like, like really, there's so much misconception about shamanism it's like oh you have to be a you know they have to be like a special type of person to be a shaman but really shamans just believe that there is life in all inanimate things like trees have life and animals have life that they are valuable that they are equal to us and that there is this this that there is energy beyond us that there are beings beyond what we can see and the the connection to those beings that you want to connect, that you want to be a part of the unknown, that you accept the unknown. I think that's the foundation to shamanic work. I think it's also understanding duality because there is a lot of like, when when I studied a lot of the shamanic work that I do, it's like you meet spirits and where a psychic might be like, oh, it's a negative spirit. We have to banish it. Like, I have never met a spirit that I immediately was like, oh, it's a negative spirit. Like, even if they're feeling negative, it's usually because they're feeling trapped. They're feeling scared. 
you know, maybe they're confused. They've been stuck here and they don't know where the heck they are. They got stuck here and they, you know, like, what are they supposed to do? They've been here for how long? Countless times, you know, they've just been going in circles and then they get frustrated and they act out like a child who's frustrated. So then I'm like, okay, well, you just need help passing over. Let me help you. And I think that if we approached people and if we approach situations from that viewpoint of neutrality, where we're going into it going, okay, well, I'm going to see how this situation makes me feel. Oh, I'm feeling negative, but it's not necessarily a negative person or a negative energy. Like there's no such thing. Like <laughs> it's all part of, it's all part of it's who part we of are. It's part of the giant disco ball in the sky I was talking about. Yeah, exactly. It's part it's of the spectrum. One. And we need, we need to stop throwing like things <laughs> that we consider negative into the trash can. Cause what we're doing is we're denying an aspect of ourselves when we do that, when we throw things that we don't, uh, Oh, I don't like this feeling. So I'm going to throw it in the trash can. Does it get rid of it? No, if anything, you're going to get more of it because it's like, you're not learning. You're not integrating. You're not accepting that part of yourself. And then you're going to just see more and more and more of it. It's going to get reflected in your relationships. It's going to get reflected in your partnerships and in your friendships and in your work situations. And people just keep seeing it. They're like, oh, well, I'm just going to keep projecting. I'm going to keep, you know, projecting energy at it, make it go away. No, no, because when you're like, it belongs to somebody else, right? Because we project no, it out too. When we find partners in that, that we can project it on each other all day long, and then nobody yeah. has to take responsibility for it, right? That's the old matrix. Yep. That's the old matrix. So in this matrix, it's more like these these ancient wisdom practices, like the Incan practice from Peru that I that I share with people. That talks about duality is like yeah. they have a cloth inside your mesa, inside your your sacred bundle. Here's mine you know, my sacred bundle. And inside Ooh, of that, yeah. you know, it's like very sexy, but in, <laughs> there's, there's like a cloth that's yes, like, it is. it's super sexy. <laughs> there's one half black and there's one half white. And it's funny, we did this exercise last year in Peru where um, the person we were working with, he said, okay, now everybody place one of your metallic balls um, where you are today. And so everybody put it kind of like somewhere in the black zone, right? Like, you know, cause we just started the retreat. And they said, okay, mm -hmm. everybody place the other ball where you want to be at the end of this retreat and everybody put it like way over on the white side like like as far over there as you could possibly get and i put mine in the middle good for you girl <laughs> yeah, that's, you know that's that's so funny i mean i i really had wanted to do a you know do a, a song for everybody i don't want to take up too much time so i'm going to just quickly like you know wrap this segment up here real quick but um it's really funny that you did that like you've seen my drum right it's a black yes. and a white cat with a rainbow and so, as I was saying earlier, like a lot of the work that I do is I've started calling it spectral, uh, spectrum healing. And I've in, like started creating my own modality, just like trying to like help people understand what it is I do. And it really does come down to understanding that our, our whole body is our physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, inspirational. So like, that's where we are kind of pointing our focus, whether that be our environment or whether that be how we perceive ourselves or like where we want to head ourselves. So like inspirational is like where, where we are directed, right? And it's like the more that we are healing these aspects and accepting these aspects in their entirety, whether it be positive or negative, the, the, the more work we are doing on helping other people recognize that they are safe being themselves. Okay. Yes. So so I'm, I, you know, I'm going to go ahead and stop there because I only get 15 minutes. Do you mind if I do a short, I don't know how long it's going to be. I just kind of told my people they were going to do a thing. So I brought drums. Is that um, not okay? It's just okay like if, if you can, if they can keep it to just a couple of minutes, that'd be great because we have another guest. No, up, I'm not, um, not going to do like a 30 minutes, 20 minutes later. No, I know everybody wants to experience oh, it because it is magical. So just like <laughs> a couple <laughs> few minutes, I know your guides will do it um, in good timing. Yeah. Well, and my next guest is Lisa Winston. She says, all good. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Lisa, for your understanding and patience. So I just would like you guys all, uh, let me know if the sound is good, okay? Does everybody feel into your body? Sink down into your chairs. If you're standing, just feel your feet against the floor. Mm -hmm.
connect with the earth. Love all that is you, all that is reflected through you. Recognize your wounds in the eyes of others. Recognize when it is time to let go. Embrace your change in its own time. So whenever you guys are ready, you just, you know, do your thing. <laughs> I'll let I'll let you switch now. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Thank you, Rainbow. I mean, that's as usual, totally amazing. Um, really incredible channeling that you do. It's really powerful. Lots of energy came through and I just encourage everybody to drink some water. Yeah, for real. Go ground yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was pretty grounding as well. So it drink was, some water. It was. <laughs> uh, I went on a little journey. <laughs> And now I'm going to go, you know, have to go sit with my, my friends in the forest. <laughs> Beautiful. Sit with your friends in the forest. Thank you so much to all the guides that came through you today. We're so grateful Absolutely. for their medicine and their encouragement to get connected with Mother Earth. And yes, yeah. it's here for and us. We're part of it. So don't be afraid yeah. of it. It is Earth. Yeah, you, these, these are all of you guys. <laughs> I'm sitting with you. Um, I'm going to, do you mind if I throw a little plug in? Uh, I have some like really good news. I just want to throw it in really quick. Yes, please share with us. Good so news. My, my podcast, Rainbows Rising, was just nominated for the People's Choice Podcast Awards. And I, I know that probably none of you have been listening to my podcast, but if you have a chance to check it out and if you like it, I encourage you to vote because it would mean a lot to me. Oh, and I, you know, I just want to share my podcast. I made it to help people learn tools like what I do so that they can heal themselves. And that's all my podcast is about. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Everybody check it out. Um, Rainbow Rising uh, podcast. And uh, you can check, find that on Soul Nectar Show. You can find Rainbow in uh, the, the listing. And please do. Yes, go vote for Rainbow. Yeah. And Congratulations I'll for being nominated. That's beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It, it was a huge surprise, to be honest. I just taken my first break from podcasting, and I got the the email. I was like, oh. so I wanted to share encouragement that to get back to it, <laughs> right? For real, <laughs> I wanted to let you know because obviously you're one of my guests. Thank you so much, Rainbow. We love your gift. We appreciate you very much. Thank Blessings. You for Thank you for me. coming on. Thank you. And we're going to bring up Lisa Winston, who is on her own epic journey during the time of Great Awakening. And I'll tell you a little bit about Lisa. She's been on my show. She is the number one international best-selling author of Your Turning Point, co-host of the Mindset Reset Show. And currently she is exploring her creativity as an artist, which is fantastically beautiful. So welcome, Lisa. I've missed you. I miss you too. I get all happy when I see you. I get happy when I see you too. <laughs> I'm so I love seeing you. I'm 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 really overjoyed to be here but i just had a really weird energy day i had so many weird things happen to me today you know how you, you just sometimes you're just off there's something going on in the universe i know it <laughs> yeah we are we are the universe and it is right? so i got my tea and i was like i'm showing up i got i put my rudraksha beads on i'm like okay we're gonna go get it so yeah thank you for having me um yeah amazing things are happening on the planet and within us each of us too and i just yeah, my journey. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, I, you know, what I find stunning about your journey is that you have really embraced this. You can see the beautiful artwork. You've embraced your artistic side and you've got like from what the last year or so that I've seen you on Facebook, on social media, you have just plunged yourself into this really deeply creative process. Tell us more about how that's helping you get through these, oh. the, the age of Aquarius transition. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, I think it all goes hand in hand. You know, I had been a singer for 40 years and then I coached for like eight years and, you know, I was good at coaching. I didn't like it though. I didn't enjoy it. And, and I just thought, you know, there's something wrong with me. You know how we always beat ourselves up, but you know, like in your book, you talk about how we, 
those of us who are here that are light workers have had trauma challenge, you know, self doubt, fear. I mean, so many things <laughs> happening, and there's this point where, you know, you just think there's something wrong with me. Well, what it was was, you know, I looked at the synchronicities that life gave me because I really thought I've been following my inner guidance like crazy, you know, like to the to the T, even if I don't know where it's going, and. So I just, it was weird because synchronicities brought me to, I had been a watercolor paint, painter for my whole life, but you know, a closet watercolor artist for the most part, because even as a musician, we always have that stigma. You can't make money doing what you love. You can't make money creating art or music or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was led to an old client from a couple of years ago, I had a phone call with him and all of a sudden he showed me this art and I went, like I exploded, <laughs> you know, it was like a download. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I have to do that. And the big message for me was, and I think this is everybody's message, we all tend to be control freaks. And so like even with watercolor painting, anything that we do that has detail, right? We're, we're, you know, we're, doing, we're trying to get it right, but we're perfectionists. And what we're being called to is let go, to let go, to surrender, to open up, to be in flow and to trust. And it's really hard to do that with fluid art. Now I've done some other stuff that's not fluid yeah. art exactly recently. Um, but I'm being called to do intuitive art at a deeper level. Mm. And so really and truly, it's been my savior through this period of time. You know, first it was like my mom died, then I moved to Texas. And then I, you know, almost died from neuro Lyme disease, been de dealing with that. And I'm like, oh, now, now we can go travel again. And then the pandemic hit. So like everybody, you know, totally stressed out, totally freaked out. Like, oh my gosh, life is not looking the way I thought it would. And so, but, but it's been a gift because it's really gotten me in touch with myself, with the divine in a deeper way. Um, you know, it's my sole purpose. And that's what we're all here to do. We signed up to do it. <laughs> we came here to the earth to do it. The planet needs us. And so for me, it was kind of like, you know how when you get a download, you know that you know. There's no not knowing. You just know it. Yeah, and it just keeps up if you don't do it. Like uh, the pressure right. just keeps going like, hello, were you listening to the message? Did you get that message? Well, I got well, it. You do and, it. And I took it and I ran with it because I was like, okay, I mean, not that I haven't, you know, our journey is is one of learning and growing. And so I've had days of doubt too, but um, I know that I know. And so because of that, I keep going. I know that I'm here to elevate and inspire people on the planet right now, because that's what we really need. We need inspiration. There are a lot of people hurting on the planet. And so what I do is I infuse my, my art with energy. And I've been told recently by a whole bunch of people that my art is actually here to, I can't even remember the, the language, but it, it's here to do something, you know, magnificent with, with what's going on right now and, and affect people at a deeper level. And so I, I had to try to grasp that because I didn't want to get egoic, you know, and part of me was like, oh, that's BS. But I know that it's true. And we each have that. It's not that I'm special. We are all special. And when we embrace our, our soul purpose and our light and our reason for being here, then magic happens. It just does. And that's what I'm, that's the journey that I'm on. And it's, you, you don't even want to know. I think I have 75 paintings. I'm starting to sell them. People are talking about how I think I sold somebody a wealth painting and within two weeks of them hanging it up, they received a settlement they hadn't been able to get for five years. Wow. <laughs> kinds of things are happening, you know? So it's like when we say that we infuse our work with energy or we heal or whatever we do, a lot of people go, you know, that's bogus. No. How does it happen? I don't know. We have to just align with the divine and let it come through, right? We're just vessels. And so it's really powerful when we say yes to why we're here, because we're so unique. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like me. And you need to answer the calling and step all in. Like there's no more playing around. The time is now. And I'm not saying because I'm 63, I'm getting older, right? So I was like, okay, this it, I've got to do it. No, the time is now for all of us to step in. People need us. They need to be inspired by us and they need to be elevated by us. And, and we're here to grow and learn. And so saying yes, no matter what to your sole purpose is imperative because you will not be happy doing anything else until you, until you say yes to it. Yes, and it's it's a great exercise anyway. I mean, I think I shared in a post today that <laughs> you could imagine when I started channeling a book and I just, I didn't at first have the name. I was just like, okay, I'm channeling a book. Great, I'm going to do that. And I signed up. I started channeling the message. I'm like, well, who is who am I speaking with? Should I say the great spirit or, you know, like I'm trying to discern like what is channeling through me. And, 
And then I, it wasn't until like right before the book went out that I got White Eagle. And I was like, and it's only because I saw my friend's picture, Catherine Skaggs, is this beautiful portrait. She does soul portraits of um, ascended masters and teachers, Catherine Skaggs, if you want to look it up. And, and it's like this gorgeous, I mean, that's him. That's the guy that's been coming to me since I was like 10 years ago and starting my journey. I had a meditation and this like being came to me with this like headdress and everything. And I was like, so I, but I didn't still know. I told my, see, that's the thing. We ignore the science. Like we say, oh, well, that's just silly or that's not really true or where that's just, it can't possibly be me. And, but it keeps coming. And at some point you have to just bite the bullet and say, yeah, I'm going to put my name. <laughs> like and I put his name on the cover. I was like, well, it's White Eagle. <laughs> and I, and I read your post and that's what it said. You're like, I, you know, you're just so <laughs> humble about it. And you're like, but I had to do it because that's what I'm being called to. And that's just, yeah. Of poopy for somebody who doesn't believe it, you know. I know. I was like, well, let me just put my rainbow hat on, you know. You guys can think whatever you want. I mean, that's kind of the space that I've gotten to with all this because, yes, the soul calls us forth to. Well, it was calling me for it to be less serious and less adulting. It was oh like. Yes. quit the serious adulting thing like yes. that is not gonna like take away your problems or whatever like having that lens you know that's not the lens that we're here to have but that's what creative expression is all about also right you know, it, it not only connects us to the divine and to each other but it connects us to our emotions our experiences i mean like when i was thought i was dying from neuro lyme disease you know i got out my paints and I just like this is like there's a devil there are angels flying around they can't see me or hear me you know I got it out because I was terrified and so it really evokes emotion and and it really um I don't know I think it really just connects us in a deeper way to spirit and also like you said we are always trying to be adults we are always stuffy adults I was a stuffy adult my daughter used to say mom I can't stand it you know you never play with me and I thought that's true. I never play. Mm -hmm. And so even like I've resorted to finger painting and, and like when I I'm, I'm in a community of like 240 creatives who have come out of the woodwork to do this, their mission. And that's why I'm in a community because it's, it's hard. We have our up and down days, right? It's great to have support, but we're learning all these intuitive processes to trust the process, to slap on paper or canvas, whatever it is that you want and trust it and let it come through and use your fingers and move it around and it's called play and it's and it's freeing and then you go through these periods you know where you try to control it and you get all frustrated your body feels all tense and you're going that's not it so yes creative expression and it doesn't have to be art you know it can be music gardening it can be almost anything on the planet but something you love something you can immerse yourself in and do for hours and hours without stopping and something that opens you up yeah, and trust that call, mm -hmm. trust that call towards whatever you're being led to, because that's the thing that's, that's the only path. If it's an inner message and you don't follow it, well, there isn't really any other direction that's going to lead you where you want to go, because that's the only direction for you. It's like that unique thumbprint. It's like, that's, that's where you're being called. That's what it is. So even if everybody else is going right and you're going left, <laughs> okay, you just kind of have to go along and just say, well, this will be interesting to see how I'm received or not received or whatever. Like it's an experiment, right? Getting that experimental mindset. I love that. Well, and I want people to also remember um, my whole life. I was afraid. I, I, you know, much afraid was my middle name. I was afraid to be visible. I was probably, I know in past lives, I've had so many horrible experiences and it's just like, I, I had this, my heart wants to go big, you know, but my, my other part of me just says, mm, I better not, you know, I'm just fine to stay small and just do nothing. And that's when you know that you're being called. I think we're all being called, in, you know, in different ways, but it's, it's time to come out of hiding. It's time mm. to start trusting and showing up. And, and even if you're afraid to do it, I, I had a quote down here that I want, didn't want to forget. It says, creativity takes courage. And that was Henry Matisse, who was an artist. And it's true. It's like anything else. You, you have courage within you. <laughs> you don't have to develop, you can develop courage, but really, truly, Courage is just stepping out and saying, like you said, you know, no matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody else does, you know, your journey, you know what you're here to do, and you're going to show up and do it as big as you can. And the naysayers can go away, but you'll have plenty of people following you. It does take courage. And the other thing I wanted to share also that I, that I really loved that I wrote down was that art or music or whatever it is that we do that's creative and creatively expressed, it 
it speaks what words are unable to express. And I love that so much. Oh, because yeah. like when you listen to a piece of music and you cry, you know, or you look at, I have, I have, oh my God, Carrie, I have to show you this. Hold on. Seriously. I have been doing these intuitive paintings and I have these totems coming through. Like I have dolphins and, and you know, ravens and everything. And I did this one painting and I, I don't have it finished yet. I want to outline it, but I did this painting and all of a sudden I noticed that this bird showed up in the middle. Can you see? Wow. It? Yes. And so it's really wild because it was like, you know, I do things and I'm like, Hey, that's not supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe know? it is supposed to be there. Maybe that's, is. that's yeah. what's supposed to be there. Yes. I mean, hearts and, and dolphins and all kinds of things are showing up and that's the fun of it. You know, it's kind of like when you look in your coffee cup and you see the foam and it's in the shape of a heart or there are hearts everywhere you look. I mean, the divine is speaking to us and through us. I've had hummingbirds. I always think about you because I, I took a video of a hummingbird just uh, yesterday morning and I have them all over the place. And I'm thinking prosperity and love and joy and good luck totems everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Well, and that's what the, that's what the uh, indigenous people do is they did divination, you know? So they toss the coca leaves and they, know, they learn how to read these signs just by opening their curiosity and opening their hearts and being present in the moment for what's coming through for that, like for the dream state or things like that. When you have a dream and, you know, dream interpretation, like I, this is all the right brain that's unlocking itself and yeah. it's opening itself up. And, you know, in terms of the gene keys, this is the shadow of, um, I think this is shadow of confusion or there's like another one. Um, no, no, it's the 11 gene key. Anyway, it, it, it creates this like block to your right brain so that you can't access your right brain and its wisdom. But then when that block starts to lift and you step into idealism is the middle ground. It's like all of a sudden, all these archetypes flood through your awareness. And yeah. that's kind of what happens through the art, right? Creative expression um, is like this, it opens and unlocks itself and all this um, ancestral archetypal information starts to flow through. And that's the land that, you know, that I've been dwelling in on shamanic journeys and, and dream interpretation and, and just walking around synchronistically noticing the signs. That's that place you can get to where you're in sync with your right brain. You're connected to your soul, you know, and your heart that that's where we're going. Well, and I want to share with people, if you're having trouble, if you're struggling, because, you know, I have done so much inner work with so many different people and different modalities. And there's some days it's like, it never ends, you know, or it's deeper than I thought it was. What I started really doing was these are two simple things that people can do. Cause what we're, what we need to do is we need to elevate our vibrations. We need, we need to remember how Abraham Hicks talked about, you know, going up the scale. Like if you're angry, it's better than being something else, but you're moving up towards love. And so what you really want to do is you want to start, you know, getting your cells excited and start, you know, it improves your health. It improves everything. But I've been doing a lot of future gratitude, like whatever it is that you want to do in your life, whatever, like I want to have a big art studio and I want to be able to just throw paint on the walls and, you know, <laughs> I mean, really do this crazy stuff on a big way. And so, you know, I do, I, you can journal it, but you can also say, I am so happy and grateful that I have this amazing studio with these gorgeous windows. It's bright. It's light. I have all these colors. I see like when you start to do that and play with it, you feel the, the energy just rise and change. And, and also I've been listening almost every night to crystal bowl healing, like sacred healing you know, for like an hour at a time that raises me up to, to love or above. And I'm seeing changes in my body. I am seeing changes. So if we can actively step in and then we have to do things to, to maintain and also to elevate, because obviously, as you know, when you elevate, you open and you, then more information comes through. Um, that'll really help you because I think in this time too, you know, I like the way that um, uh, Rainbow was talking about how there's no really bad energy, but there's heavy energy, there's heaviness, there's chaos in the world. I don't choose to sit and look at all that. I do what I can. I do my part, but then I manage my energy because every person who manages their energy and elevates, elevates the planet as well. And that's what we need right now in this time. So Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much for coming on, being willing to come on and share your insights and your beautiful wisdom and your smile and grace. And I, I just appreciate you and love you so much. I love you. Thank you for doing this event. I really appreciate it. And I, it's been a joy. And thank you for asking me. Too. Absolutely. Of course, I was going to ask you. I was like, there was no question. So um, I'm going to release you now and then let's have a conversation really soon and get connected back. 
Yeah. Okay. Love you much, Lisa. Bye. Bye. And our next guest is Hillary Harley. And so get ready, Hillary. Here it comes. I'm bringing her in. She has got amazing insights. She is a practicing astrologer integrating Reiki and the Akashic Records into her client sessions. You can listen to Hillary's podcast. I've been on there as well. And she's been on mine. Awesome, awesome insights. She had great insights into 2022. It's called Mystical Messages, and she has a monthly astrology forecast, and she does amazing interviews. Welcome, Hillary. And I'm going to ask you to unmute. You got to unmute yourself there. <laughs> so good to see you. And of course, it's Hillary's great. also outdoors in nature. <laughs> well, I, I took a page out of Rainbow's uh, suggestion, and I thought, you know, why am I sitting inside? It's a beautiful day. And then in New England, we have to take advantage of this. So. That's right. There's very right. few days that are super nice. Right, right, right. So uh, would you like the astro astrology oh. breakdown? Oh, yes. I am very sure that all everyone watching would like the astrology breakdown for like what we're going to face the rest of 2022. Um, so we are in the pivot, uh, the swinging door. Um, I think everybody can feel the energy right now. It is heavy duty. And uh, this particular weekend coming up, we have... Uh, three facets that are really coming together in the sign of Taurus. So Taurus is a primal earth energy. It's the second sign of the zodiac. And it's been a theme all year because the lunar nodes, the north node, which is the evolutionary calling, is in Taurus. And the south node is 180 degrees opposite in Scorpio. So we're letting go. Scorpio is about purging and releasing and regeneration and rebirth. And Taurus is about planting and growing. And its key word is value. So we are all learning about values this year. Um, what we value in ourselves, in life, um, in just it's not just money and resources and tangible and yes mother earth that's paramount right now um we're learning about values but we're also learning about moral what we morally value and that has been front and center this year so the difference between right and wrong which i think has been the lines were blurred for the past few years, that's becoming much more crystallized and um, we're being pushed, in some cases forced, to really take a stand. This is drawing a line in the sand. This is what I stand for. This, this is what I value. And so there have been rifts that have been occurring. And it's it's a time a glo you know the global big picture is deconstructing and destructuring um which is scorpio so that we can make way for the new that is coming in so as the old is released um it gets churned up and put back into the earth to be planted and rebirthed and renewed. And so that has been the primary theme of 2022. And it's going to continue into about mid 2023. But this weekend in particular, I just want everybody to know, um, it's like a sandwich. It's like a cosmic sandwich uh, where we have motivating Mars, which is like the gas pedal. It's the kick in the pants that gets you out of bed in the morning. It has been moving slower and slower, closer toward Uranus, which is the great awakener, the change agent. And sometimes there's shock and awe that comes with that. And sometimes there are windfalls and eureka moments. It's not all bad. It's not all good. But Mars has been moving this this energizer bunny has been moving toward Uranus. And at the same time, 
the transiting north node in the sky has been moving toward Uranus on the other side, making this sandwich. So we are at critical mass right now, this particular weekend through the Lion's Gate, which is 888 um, or 88, uh, August 8th. And uh, so I just want everybody to breathe and this, you know, focus on what you can control and what you do want to manifest because this is also a prime manifestation opportunity because Taurus is about what you can see, feel, and touch um, to manifest. So we have a new moon tomorrow about 1, 2 p.m. on the East Coast, 1 p.m. Central. So it's a great time to hand write three to five intentions and then either plant in the ground, very Taurus, you know, gardening, harvesting, growing, sowing, um, or to a light, set a light in a dish. Beautiful. So you actually just muted yourself again. I don't know how that happened. There you are, so technology. So what's fascinating is, um, you know, this these waves of like pressure, right? These waves of pressure that come through and then it's like the, the intensity rises, like the sandwich thing and then it opens back up, right? So we're kind of mm -hmm. in these, like it feels to me this year, like we're in these pockets like this, where it's doing this and then it's releasing and then it's doing yeah. it again and then it's releasing. And with each one of these, we're like being up leveled and upgraded, but we're still like, you know, we're still kind of looming at the next mountain going, oh no, here it comes. So like that, that space of stillness, again, like we've been talking about, that space of being able to access the stillness within, to be able to kind of ride the wave of that, spend time in nature, get connected. I love your suggestion for like planting something tangible, maybe even like a crystal, like right in yep. Mother Earth and say, here's my intention, you know? Yep. And as we Absolutely. heard earlier, like the, the Jennifer started off, us off talking about you know, the attentions that we set from gratitude, like having already received and, and being in a space of not like wanting something or lacking something, but like already in fulfillment. And then our intentions being really clear that it's like planetary, like putting mm -hmm. ourselves sort of in that planetary mix, but not like just kind of focusing on me, me, me. Like there's like this way that the we conversation, like the the, the prayers being about the whole planet, about the, our relations, our plants and animals that can't speak up for themselves. Like we stepping into that earth stewardship is actually pretty potent during this time, I would think. Very potent. It is a very potent time. Uranus is anything that contacts it is electrified. It rules electricity. It, it's the mover and the shaker. And so when you have the accelerator Mars coming up in contact with Uranus and then the North Node, which is also an intensifier, this is a really intense series of, I would say, a 10-day window uh, beginning yesterday. Tomorrow. Well, oh, yesterday. Yeah, okay. I mean, tomorrow is the new moon, but the, the, the impact of this, we're starting to feel it. So you can feel like you have electrical currents running through your body. You can feel unsettled. You can have disturbances with sleep. There's lots of different ways that you can be getting downloads. I mean, it is, it, it's all over. It's very personal um, how it manifests for you. But what you do want to focus on is, first of all, you're not going crazy. <laughs> you are I, not I, insane. I, you are not, and to allow, just to allow, and yes, grounding practices, so yoga, journaling, meditation, walks in nature, um, anything that is, any crystal like onyx or hematite, very good right now to keep on your body, a grounding stone, um, music is also very cleansing and healing um writing um any artistic endeavor i know you just had lisa on and creativity is essentially problem solving it we 
in our world tend to think that it's uh, limited to the fine arts, but any creative endeavor, whether she's right, whether it's cooking, gardening, technology, business, you know, anything that is connecting the dots, that is, this is an incredibly creative time. So, you know, what do you want to plant? What do you, asking questions, what do you want your life to look like? And handwriting those. And then, yes, tomorrow afternoon and again on Friday, this is just the new moon, 24, 48 hour window um, to be looking at what you want to sow, S-O-W. Yes, and, you know, and it's interesting. It's also a time... You know, this is one thing I became aware of a while back with setting intentions because we do ceremonies at the new moon and the and the full moon, and I teach this with my people, right? Like, always in a cycle of of um, release and expansion, release and expansion, mm -hmm. acknowledgement, gratitude. Thank you so much, Mother Earth. We so appreciate all these gifts that we have received. We acknowledge we receive them. You know, like so every two weeks, taking a look at that, and it's important to release because some things that maybe you wanted five years ago or two years ago, or one mm -hmm. year ago, or a month mm -hmm. ago at this point, because things are so fast and rapid that you might've put really powerful prayers in for, now it might have shifted. So exactly this way of just kind of putting up your arms around everything you ever asked for and just going, I'm handing it back to you, Mother Earth, mm -hmm. because I've changed, you know, I have grown, I've expanded, the world is different, I'm different, because we're elevating out of that, we're elevating our consciousness as a collective from homo sapien into homo luminous, and along that trajectory, right. our perceptions changing, and our, our idea about, like what you were talking about, with resources, like even that is shifting, right, like our idea about what resources are is shifting. Right, right. And it's really important to remember um, a really healthy exercise is to reflect on the thing that you were dying for. You know, you, you just couldn't live without it, whether it's a person, a job, you know, a, a house, whatever it is that you were just dying for. And then you got it and you moved on. You know, you, you yeah, allowed it's like, for thanks. it. You, you manifested it. And I'm so onto the next thing I want, you know, you're onto the next thing. And so that's where we are right now is really a critical mass focusing on what is so important for us of value. So, and what Jennifer was saying is like, this is an opportunity. She kicked it off uh, today. And what she was saying is this is an opportunity to actually, what I would phrase it as, this isn't the words that she used, but I would say it's an opportunity to step into the mystery and to offer yeah. yourself in service to the mystery of how this yeah. all evolution is gonna take place and offer your gifts in service in a way, and just like the simplest prayer, like in a way that lights me up and makes me so delighted, happy, and excited about my life and wake up in the morning and just ready to go. like. Whatever it is that I can do for the planet, just put me there, right? So it's sort of like right. this open invitation to be, you know, to be moved because right. without controlling it. Exactly. So, and that's a key point. We are not in charge of the how. We are in charge of the desire what, and we can plant that and focus on that. But the how is left up to source and the universe. Yes, because as was mentioned earlier, you know, every time we we um, we have a vision, right? So most of the things we want is because we got a vision or like our heart opened and said it wanted something or desired something or it wanted to go in a certain way. That's where it comes from, right? You know, usually. Exactly. Exactly. So, so it's our own soul saying, hey, here's the next idea, you know? Exactly. Hey, here's okay. the next vision. Right. Right. <laughs> right. So right. you already, your soul already knows that that's what the next thing is. It's just letting you know. So, you know, it's like less of this idea of I have to like earn it or prove my worth for it or, you know, try to yeah. manipulate myself into it or can, you know, manipulate circumstances so it happens. It's just more like, oh, thanks. Okay. That's what's coming. Great. Right. Exactly. Well, thanks for letting me know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah everybody just focus on uh your intentions three to five and it's very important to hand write them not type 
and um, plant them in the ground or set them alight. And I love the idea of planting it with a crystal um, to help it grow. Yeah, that's beautiful. Letting that crystal connect with earth because the rock people were the first ones on the planet, you know? Exactly. The rock people exactly. and the stone people were the first ones here. So the rock and stone kingdom, they have the most ancient wisdom. They've been here the longest. And so when we talk about, you know, deep, deep power of the earth, that's that's our first stop, you know, is these master teachers in the in the stone kingdom, the crystals. So um, bringing them into your manifestation, especially with Taurus energy and that grounding energy, that's super potent. Yeah, it is a very potent weekend and 10 day window into the lion's gate. And also be mindful of language. I just want to say um, this is I'm a manifester, by the way, and so I'm particularly sensitive to this. Um, Thing I'm going to share. <laughs> Language is huge. Oh my what goodness, you we're creating worlds with our words. Okay, so like, be mindful of what what world, and maybe even envision the world that you know you that your soul is showing you what's possible. Right. So we're opening up not what's probable, because if we focus on what's probable, we all kind of see where that's going. So mm -hmm. we want to focus on what's possible. And exactly. bring the what's possible into the physical manifestation using this time of seriously powerful prayer time. So that's my encouragement to everybody. Like focus yes. on the potential, what could be the 1% chance that things could be this way. Bring that vision down. Right. Yeah, I love Lisa's idea of practicing future gratitude. I mean, that's an amazing putting words to imagery, visualizations. Absolutely. Well, gorgeous Hillary. Oh my gosh, you are just a gem. Um, is there anything else you want to share with us or is are you just like that was the main thing that you want to have? Well, that's the most immediate thing that's front and center for this next 10 day window. Um, August is our last clear energetic month before Mercury goes retrograde for three weeks. Um, Not good September. for messengers. Yeah, but it's a time of reflection and integration. And yes. so retrograde uh, for interpersonal planets, Mercury, and then Mars will be retrograde in November and December is really important. People don't, you know, we as human beings, we want to push forward all the time. But these retrogrades coming up are really, really important for um, our integration and reflection. And so that back to that stillness idea, that stillness concept. So we have this opportunity to manifest over the next 10 days, and then it's going to be going back into stillness, back into reflection, back into allowing and all of those dynamics. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So thank you for having me thank today. You. Carrie. It's been a joy to share. And as you can, as you guys can tell, Hillary's insights are amazing, and so definitely go check it out on Mystical Messages. I know you just got into a magazine or something too, or like a regular publication is taking your astrology yeah. insights. Yep, Spin Spin Magazine. Oh. Um, yeah, so congratulations! Very, very exciting. Thank you. Very exciting. So, <sighs> all right, sister. Well, let's catch up in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Definitely. Love you. Okay. Take love care. you too. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. I hope you enjoyed all the transmissions and the wisdom from this part two of our second wave celebration event and look forward to part three coming up next. If you found even one gold nugget in this episode of Soul Nectar Show, will you do us a favor? Will you subscribe, like, and share this episode? Maybe even write a comment and let us know what you thought about it. We really, really want to engage with you at a much deeper level. Let's be part of community together. Have a great week, everyone. Bye for now. To dive in deeper to nourishing conversation, visit soulnectar.show. Soul Nectar Show. Awaken the away. Soul Nectar Show. Take a sip from the drip of the nectar From the source of who you are